Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine. My name is James and I am Scuba Diver Magazine's man in Miami. Scuba Diver Magazine have brought me over from my own channel, Divers Ready, with one simple goal in mind, to help make you a better scuba diver. So if you haven't done so already, make your next dive on that subscribe button, click the little bell icon, and that way you'll never miss any of our awesome content. This week is the next video in our series that we like to call Dive Like a Pro, and we're focusing on waiting. Later in this video, I'm gonna be giving you my one single piece of advice for getting your waiting absolutely perfect like a professional diver. But first, I'm gonna answer the five questions that I get most commonly as a dive instructor concerning the amount of weight you need to go scuba diving. Starting with, why is proper weighting so important for successful diving? Being correctly weighted is absolutely essential because having the right amount of weight on you ties into your ability to perform the four core skills of scuba diving that we've been talking through throughout this series of Dive Like a Pro. If you're overweighted, you're gonna to need to put more gas through your buoyancy compensating device, which is gonna increase your gas consumption, which is gonna mean that your buoyancy will be off and you'll constantly be fighting an up-down kind of battle. Uh, if you have uh, the weight incorrectly dispersed around your body, your trim will be off. Um, if you have too much weight, you're gonna have to kick harder than you should have to, which is gonna mean your finning will be off balance. Uh, if you don't have enough weight, you're gonna be constantly fighting to get down. Uh, if you're overweighted, you're gonna be working harder, which means your breathing rate is... Th there's hundreds of reasons why your weighting needs to be spot on. It it's an essential skill of scuba diving. And as I said before, it ties to the pillars of your scuba diving ability. Next question I get, dive gear is heavy. Why do I need any weight at all? Won't I sink with just dive gear on? No, you won't, because Archimedes says you won't. Uh, in about 250 BC, the Greek mathematician Archimedes laid down the law for what is basically an essential principle for all scuba divers, and that is an object wholly or partially submerged in a liquid is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of that liquid displaced. So even though, yes, scuba diving gear is heavy, it's also bulky, and what we're focused on is not weight, but density. So if you have big bulky gear, as heavy as it is, it's still gonna displace a lot of water and that needs to be compensated against using something that is incredibly dense in terms of a lead block. And I hope none of you have ever thought about getting in the water without weight, but if you did, you'll notice it was very hard to go scuba diving. Even in bulky, heavy dive gear, uh, a normal human being cannot get themselves under the water without the assistance of lead. Scuba diving without lead is just expensive snorkeling. So we add enough weight to get us under the water and then add gas to our BCD to make sure that we're not knuckle dragging across the seabed. Next question I get asked all the time as a dive professional is how much weight do I need? Well, unfortunately there's no easy answer or equation for this. I can't take your body weight and add the weight of your gear and divide by the first number you think of and come up with the right amount because a lot of it has to do with the composition of your body type. Add to that the different densities of the gear choices that we make, and it's not really a cut and dry answer. Still, the best way to figure out how much weight a diver needs is trial and error. It's to get in and do a weight check, more on weight checks a little bit later on, and refine it until you get the minimum amount of weight that you actually need. Personal buoyancy plays a big part in how much weight you need to go scuba diving. And the best study that was ever conducted on personal buoyancy was done actually by a swim coach from Georgia Tech called Fred Lanou in the 1960s. And he published a book called Drownproofing, a new technique for surviving in the water. Um, his concern was obviously keeping swimmers safe and buoyant. And he did probably the most expansive research on how floaty or sinky buoyant a human body actually is. Not in like a creepy uh, throwing corpses in a swimming pool kind of way. The summary of his study, I'll save you reading it because it's pretty dry material, is that humans range from about seven pounds positively buoyant, seven pounds floaty, to about five pounds negatively buoyant, or sinky, as he referred to them. Not sure you can call people sinky, is that? I'm sure it's gonna offend somebody. In order to understand personal buoyancy as Fred Lanou studied it, you just need to understand that the different tissues that comprise the human body have different densities and therefore different buoyancy attributes. Bone is incredibly dense, but as you get older it gets less dense. Uh, muscle is incredibly dense. 
Think about two glasses of water. You put a lump of butter into one and a lump of steak into the other. The steak sinks and the butter floats. So your personal body composition will tell you where you lie on that seven pounds positive to five pound negative scale. And then in addition to your personal buoyancy, you need to consider your equipment when trying to figure out how much weighting you use. Whilst all your equipment choices have some effect on your buoyancy underwater, there are really three pieces of kit that change your buoyancy as the dive progresses. The first, obviously, is your BCD, your buoyancy compensating device, which you need in order to make adjustments based on your other gear. So I'm not gonna focus on that too much, but think about the other two, uh, starting with your tank. First off, all tanks, whether they're steel or aluminium, become more buoyant as the dive progresses because you're consuming gas from them. So you're making the tanks lighter. Yes, gas does have a weight value, significant weight value. And as you consume the gas, the tank gets lighter, which means it gets less dense, which means it becomes more positively buoyant. Now, if you have a steel tank, it is unlikely that even though it will become more positively buoyant, it won't tip over to the point of being actually buoyant. That's not true of aluminium tanks. If you take a standard Al 80, for example, 80 cubic feet or 11.6 liters in metric, uh, as you consume that tank and you get it down to around, I wanna say 1300 PSI, I think it's just shy of 100 bar, uh, that's the tipping point where they go from being negatively buoyant to start becoming positively buoyant. And then as you drain the tank further and further down, the more floaty the tank becomes. So you need to take that into account to make sure you've got enough lead for the end of the dive. More on that later. The third piece of equipment you need to consider is your thermal protection. There is a huge difference between diving in a rash guard and shorts and a dry suit. And the reason for that difference is displacement. A dry suit is a lot bulkier. It takes up more volume. It displaces more water, which means you need to add more lead to overcome that buoyant factor. Even a couple of millimeters difference in the thickness of wetsuits when spread over the area of your whole body is gonna make a huge difference to the amount of water that you displace. But not only that, but wetsuit material changes its buoyancy characteristics throughout the dive. At the start of your dive on the surface, the wetsuit is at its maximum thickness. As you descend and ambient pressure increases, the neoprene that your wetsuit is made out of actually compresses, which means as you get deeper, your wetsuit becomes less buoyant. And then on ascent, the reverse happens. The pressure releases, the wetsuit expands, and you become more buoyant, which means your rate of ascent, if not controlled properly, will accelerate. And the third factor to consider after personal buoyancy in your equipment choices is the water type, salt or fresh water. If you're going from fresh water to salt water, you will need to add lead because salt water is more dense and vice versa going the other way. So James, how do I conduct a weight check? Well, very easily, in five simple steps. Ready? Here we go. Step one, get kitted up, guess the amount of weight you need, make a giant stride entry into the water, having completed a buddy check first, of course. And then once on the surface, breathe in a medium deep breath and hold it. Step two, raise your inflator over your head, tuck your other arm in and cross your ankles. The reason you do those two things is to resist the temptation to skull or kick. You wanna be perfectly stationary. Step three, Release all the air from your BCD and you should float at eye level, still holding that breath. If your BCD is empty and your chin is still out of the water, you don't have enough lead. If your BCD is empty, you're still holding that normal breath and you are sinking past eye level, you have too much weight. Step four, breathe out. You should start to sink. Don't kick, just let yourself go down. If you don't find yourself sinking, you don't have enough weight. Step five, you may wanna add an additional two pounds if you're using an aluminum tank because obviously your tank is full at the beginning of the dive and at the end of the dive it won't be full and you're gonna to have to fight that positive characteristic of that type of cylinder. If you're diving steel, don't worry about it. Just go enjoy your dive, have fun, job done. Okay, next question. Why do some divers struggle with their weighting? It's true, I see this all the time on dive boats. I'll be minding my own business, kidding up, and the dive master will be going around the boat and asking how much weight people need. And I'll see somebody who's much smaller than me and is diving in just shorts and a rash guard and doesn't appear to be in any way bulky, diving nice small gear, and they'll ask for like 10 kilos or 22 pounds of lead. It's a common mistake to think you need more lead than you do, and as I said at the start of this video, that's just a really inefficient way to dive. Although this series is called Dive Like a Pro, it could possibly be a professional diver's fault that you think you need more weight than you do because some less reputable dive instructors out there, instead of taking the time to get their students right with their weighting as they're going through the open water course, will just sandbag them 
just laden them like a desert camel with as much weight as possible uh, because well it's kind of like walking a dog on a short leash really if you have the dog under control you know where they're going to be and the same thing with divers underwater if you take your eye off a diver for a short while um, it's it's normally better that on a shallow training dive that your diver is in the sand at the bottom 30 feet down rather than shooting to the surface and bobbing around in boat traffic it's not right i don't do it i don't support it but that doesn't mean it doesn't happen if your dive instructor did that to you and has convinced you that you need more weight than you actually do i suggest you go back to them and ask for your money back or make them teach you properly. Ultimately though, once you're certified, it's down to you to refine the amount of weight you need and get it down to the absolute minimum that you can actually dive with safely and under control. Right, well that answers the five most common questions that I get as a dive professional about weighting. And now it's time, as has become our habit with this series of videos, for me to give you my one single biggest piece of advice to help you get your weighting correct. And that is, do a confirmation weight check at the end of your dive. Think about the end of your dive. Your tank is the lightest, your wetsuit, if you're using one, is gonna be at its thickest, it's gonna have re-expanded after your dive, and you're gonna be the lightest you're gonna be at any point during that dive. So it's actually more important that you're correctly weighted when you're trying to hold that five meter, 15 foot safety stop and get your buoyancy really on point, that your weighting is correct then. You wanna make sure that at the end of the dive, you're not shooting up to the surface and you're correctly weighted for your safety stop. So a confirmation weight check at the end of a dive is a very useful way of doing that. Here's how you do one in four easy steps. Step one, ascend to your safety stop and hold a tight hover. Step two is Hold your safety stop depth and breathe your tank down, keeping a really close eye on your gas to just above your reserve pressure. Now, I'd recommend doing this after you've completed your safety stop so you can surface immediately afterwards. Then step three is to offload portions of the weight that you're carrying. I personally recommend using small increments of weight. If you can get those little lead pellet bags that come in like half pound or one pound increments, that can really help you refine the exact amount of weight you need to go diving. If you're not doing your safety stop on like a nice sandy ledge where it's easy to put small amounts of weight down and then retrieve them later, I recommend just putting them in your buddy's BCD pocket when they're not watching. Once you've offloaded as much weight as you can without floating up, that is the minimum weight you need to complete the dive. So think about it, your tank is at its absolute lightest and you have the minimum amount of lead. And then step four, you'll still be able to breathe naturally and hold neutral buoyancy with that amount of weight and the lightest tank and your wetsuit if you're using one at its thickest. And then once you've retrieved the little weight and you've made a safe surface and exited the water, uh, you can make a note of how much weight you were able to dump and still stay neutrally buoyant with a very light scuba tank. And you know what the exact amount of weight is you need for subsequent dives. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you learned something from this video and I hope you enjoyed the content that we're putting out. If you did, how about you give us the old thumbs up? And if you haven't done so already, I strongly suggest you subscribe to this channel because we are so passionate here at Scuba Diver Magazine about one thing and one thing only, making you a better, more well-informed diver. I thank you so much. Just over here, I'll put some other videos that I've made for Scuba Diver Magazine that you can check out. And in the description of this video below is a link to my channel, Divers Ready, where we have a ton of videos aimed at helping you become a better scuba diver. So feel free to head over there and check out more content from me. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, my name's James, Scuba Diver Magazine's man in Miami. Thank you so much for watching. Dive safe, dive often, and dive like a pro. Oh.